Um, hello, everyone who is joining us um, via the recording. Um, thank you for watching. And this week we are talking about sections 3.1, 3.2, and 3.5, correct? I think so, yeah. If that's wrong, then we'll just talk about something else. But um, basically what's going on in these sections is a lot of memorization, um, a lot of practicing, and a lot of just like getting used to like what we're doing because we've been talking about like derivatives and rate of change like in a very like theoretical way and we've been calculating them by hand and all that jazz but like now's the time we actually are like taking derivatives in the way that is easiest to take them and that's not taking them by hand because taking them by hand is really hard so um if you guys just want to get started with at 3.1, we'll start with the like very beginning, which is using um, derivatives of powers and polynomials. And once we get that done, we'll move on to logs and trig functions. So, um, let's do problem. Let's do six. Let's do eight. And let's do so. This one is y is equal to x to the four thirds. Eight is going to be y is equal to three t to the fourth minus two t squared. And ten is going to be f of x is equal to 1 over x. Okay, so uh, first things first, um, let's look at this, this baby. Now this one basically is um, uh, like a power rule in the way that we have been learning power rules. So the power rule as it's given is, let me write this down, uh, of x to the n is equal to n x to the n minus 1. Does that make sense? Like, you don't necessarily have to know exactly, like, how we got to this point, like, how we found out that this is equal to this, but what's important is that you know that like this is true and accurate. So, um, that being said, um, feel free to in the chat box at any time if you have any suggestions about any of these answers, um, let me know, and we can talk about your ideas. Otherwise, I'm just gonna kinda keep chugging along. Um, this is usually a pretty short GSG in terms of like actual like content because we're just basically doing the same thing in a variety of different ways. So, <clears throat> um, this is our number up here. So, how I remember it is I say that if I have y prime, I am going to bring down that number right here. So, now it's 4 over 3 times x to the 4 over 3 minus and it should be one, but because I like this is a fraction, I like to think of it as three over three. So what this actually equals is four over three x to the one third. How is that for you? So this is y prime, and that's the derivative. Awesome. All right, why don't you try number eight? Same sort of process. Twelve x to the third minus four t. Exactly. So what we did here is we brought this four down. Yeah, t. You're right. I x is t is all of that jazz. Um, the important thing is that you got your coefficients and your powers correct. Um, see, I didn't even notice. Um, but, yep, brought that 4 down, so that's 
three times four, and this is two times two. Um, subtract one, so we ended up with two than one, um, and here two than three. All right, what about this next one? How are you going to approach this one? Exactly. Yeah, this is this is a little bit trickier because they have it put in this like way. Um, what I would do is rewrite this in a way that is, yeah, exactly. I would rewrite this in a way that is easier. So I would say that f of x is equal to um, x to the negative 4 because um, as just kind of like a general rule, if something is like 1 over x, this is actually x to the negative 1. And so that's just like something that will make it easier for you to visualize what's going on here. Um, so if this is x to the negative 4, that means f prime of x is equal to negative 4x, and then we still have to subtract 1, not add 1. So it's not going to be negative 3, it's going to be negative 5. So we're going more negative um, in terms of the exponent. But exactly, that's exactly right. This could also be written as negative 4 um, over x to the 5 in a variety of other ways too, but that is exactly right. So yeah, that is the beginning of this one. Let's try a couple more. Um, let's do 20, 28, and yeah, let's start with 20 and 28. 20, is y is equal to r to the negative 7 over 2, and I don't know why I put an equal sign there, and 28 is y is equal to 3t squared plus 12 over the square root of t minus 1 over t squared. Okay. So 20, pretty similar to the first one that we did, which I think was number six. Um, so we're gonna start by saying, like this is my number up here, I'm gonna move it down. So this is going to be y prime is equal to negative seven over two r. And then I'm just gonna do it as two over two. So negative seven over two minus two over two. So that is going to be negative seven over two times r to the negative nine over two. So there's that for us. Um, exact same process as number six, just with like some different numbers. All right, what about this one? Um, first things first, we should rewrite this so that it's easier for us to understand and use the power rule on. How would you suggest rewriting it? That term is fine. What should I do with this one? Well, I know that this one is going to be um, minus t to the negative 2. You were very close. You only forgot one negative sign. So this is 12t to the negative one half because this is in the denominator. Yep, exactly. Um, so um, as Derek, your name is right? As Derek so astutely pointed out in the chat box, um, the, square, the square root of t or x or anything is going to be equal to that number to the one half. So. That's basically the rule that we use. We said that 12 over the square root of t is equal to 12 over t to the 1 half, which is equal to 12t to the negative 1 half. So that's what we did. Um, this is both of uh, this and this is like, th these are important rules to get down so that you don't get confused um, because sometimes it'll be a little, um, look, the problems will steadily get more complicated, and sometimes you won't just be using power rules, you'll be using a combination of rules. Um, 
And the goal is to simplify it as much as you can and use the easiest rule as much as you can. So um, there's the simplified version. Um, this should be easier to solve. Here we have y prime is equal to two times three is six times two minus one is, this is t, uh, minus, because this is a negative, so minus 12 over two, so 12 times one half, um, t to the negative one half minus two over two, minus, or rather plus, 2t to the negative 3. So I'm changing these uh, minuses to pluses here because of these negative signs as they come down. Um, I will simplify this up again. So this is y prime is equal to 6t minus 6t to the negative 3 over 2 plus 2t to the negative 3. And there's my answer. So there it is. Um, yeah. Uh, so basically, like I said, this is usually a pretty short session because people, um, you're just doing the same thing every time. It's the same process, um, the same, the exact same thing. All right, let's do number 40. Um, this problem is a little bit different because they're trying to make us use the answer that we get. So we have f of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared plus 7x minus 11. And what we need to find is not the derivative of this. We need to find f prime of 0, f prime of 2, and f prime of negative 1. So in order to do that, we need to find f prime. So f prime of x is equal to, bring this down, this is 3x squared minus 8x plus 7. And then this, this is basically x to the 0, kind of think of it. Um, don't actually think of it like that because then you're going to say like, it's, um, yes, exactly, Derek. Um, Derek is in the chat box. We're first going to find f prime, then we're going to plug in those numbers. Um, kind of think of it like this. So then it's like times zero, but then it's not going to be x to the negative one. You're, lo you're losing your x if you have a term without any x's in it. So, um, this is going to turn into a zero, essentially. So I don't even want to think about that. I don't want to think about that. Um, so now we have our f prime. Let's plug in all of these numbers. So f prime of 0 is equal to 0 minus 0 plus 7. So that's 7. f prime of 2 is equal to 3 times 4, because that's 2 squared minus 8 times 2 plus 7, which is 12 minus 16 plus 7, which is negative 4 plus 7, so that's 3. Um, and then finally, we have f prime of negative 1. Negative 1 squared is just 1, so that's 3 times 1 minus 8 times negative 1 plus 7, so this is 3 plus 8 plus 7, so that's what, 15, 18. So here are our answers. Um, and they are answers because we used this derivative to find what these numbers were. Um, okay. That's pretty much all I have for you guys for 31 uh, or 3.1. Um, does anyone have any questions about this specifically? Like what's going on in this section? I'm going to take that as, I oh know, yeah. Once you know the rules, it gets kind of easy. 
Um, basically, the best way to do this part of calculus is just to do a million problems. Um, what I would do is I would just like turn on some music and I would just like sit down and do like every problem of the book and then I'd be like, wow, that's a lot of math, but um, it would, I would spend like a half an hour doing it and like you get the rules pretty well down after doing, yeah. Yeah, it is, it is just practice. Um, <clears throat> And it gets kind of boring after a while because you're like, ah, oh, I think I know this. And it's like, ah, oh, I don't remember it when I'm taking my quiz, which is really frustrating because you know that you've done it before. So there's the power rule. You'll be using this all the time, all the time. Very, very important rule. Very common rule in pretty much everything. Okay, let's talk about 3.2, which is exponential and logarithmic functions. This section is a little bit more difficult because people sometimes, like even initially at the beginning of this course, um, struggle a little bit with like what an exponential and a logarithmic, logarithmic function like look like. Um, but the basic rule, basic rules that you should know from this section, like you don't need to like really think about like what like the graph of this looks like right now. I mean, like, that, that is something that you, you shouldn't think about, but um, don't, like, think about, like, that entirely right now. Um, just if you, if, this, if you're struggling with that, memorize the rules, and you'll be a-okay. That's what I'm trying to say. So here we have the derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. And then we have the derivative of the natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. So these are our rules, and these are very important rules, and these, again, you will use all the time. Okay. Um, and in the book, they have some algebraic uh, or geometric uh, justifications for why this is true. And if you're interested in that sort of thing, that's, like, I think a really good way of visualizing it. But um, if you're not, then don't look at it. I'm looking on page 147 for those of you who are interested. Um, but yeah, so that's a cool page. Take a look at that. Anyway, let's do some problems. Let's start off with, let's do two. Start off in the beginning. Um, and we are on page, if I can get my Zoom to cooperate. Page 148 right now. So let's do two, which is f of x equals e to the x. So the lights, two e to the x plus x squared. Um, let's do four, which is y is equal to five t squared plus four e to the t, and let's do 6, y is equal to 2 e to the x, plus 2 over x. Okay, let's start with number 2. Um, number 2 and number 4 are basically the exact same strategy. We have one term that's the, the new rule that we just learned, which is this e to the x. So we know that f prime of x, um, if there's ever a plus sign in a, like, you know, it's like a statement that you're taking a derivative of, that's fine. Basically, we're just going to add the derivatives. Um, I could write up the whole rule, but it's like really unwieldy. Basically, the derivative of this is the derivative of this plus the derivative of that. Um, all right. So the, what is the derivative of 2e to the x? Well, it's just going to be 2 times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. So it's the exact same thing. And then the derivative of this is from last section, 3.1, and that's 2x. So here's f prime. All right. Um, this is the same like principle, y prime is equal to 10t. So this is from 3.1 plus 4 e to the t. All right, number six is a little bit more complicated. Um, do you, first of all, let's write it in a way that's um, a little easier. 
Do you remember in the beginning of the year when we were talking about um, where are you talking about here? Is that the X that you're concerned about? Yeah. Okay. So the question in there is why is the derivative of e to the x e to the x and not um, x e to the x? First of all, we're very glad that it isn't because that would bring in a whole other layer of complexity. Um, because we would just be like adding x terms and things would get very complicated very quickly. Um, the most simple explanation I have for you is that um, x to a number is a very different function from a number to x. Um, because x to a number, like we're going to have this like parabola type thing. Um, and it's going to grow at some rate, um, like, so if it's like x squared, then it's like this, and it's going to grow at some rate, but it's going to be like reasonable. Um, if you like think about, like, what is, like, how fast is x squared going to grow? It's going to grow at like a constant rate, right? So the rate of change of x to the n is going to be nx to the n minus 1. So that's basically like what we were saying earlier. So like if we have a parabola, the rate of change of this is going to be a line. Right? Because that's x squared. Um, now if we have this, this is getting very, very large very, very quickly. Just like imagine like if it was e to the 1 and then e to the 2 is so much larger, and then e to the 3, and then that's just kind of going into infinity. Um, and that's, it just like it skyrockets. Um, and it's like a very different looking function. It's a very different behaving function. So these two functions are not equivalent. So my number one thing is to say, hey, first things first, where is the x? If the x is in like the main body of it, this is a polynomial. And this is something that we worked with in 3.1. If it's something like this, it's not necessarily like a polynomial. It's like a number, number, and then it's to the x. So it grows much faster, it behaves much differently. e to the x is a very convenient number because of logarithms um, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so basically different functions, different rules. Um, same reason why we wouldn't, for instance, like it's, it's much more obvious if I write it like, like this is, like you guys were talking about 3.5, we're gonna be talking about that in just a sec. Um, if I have a function that looks like this, um, it's like very obvious that this is a different function than this. So these are not the same functions, and so I would take derivatives differently. Um, it's not so obvious that this is a different function, but it is. Because of where the x is located. Here and it's the base. Here it's the base. So um, that is why we don't take the x down. Does that make sense? If a number is in front of x, would you bring the number out? Yes. Very good question. So the question is: If I had something that looked like y is equal to e to the two x, would it would the derivative be y prime is equal to e to the two x or y prime is equal to two e to the two x? And you would absolutely bring this number down if, if that was a function. Um, yeah, and that's because it's a number. 
not a uh, variable. So we're looking at like all, like x could be anywhere from like negative infinity to infinity. And so um, like x is very much a variable in this instance. And so we can just bring that two down and look at it um, like in this different place. But if we were to bring the x down, it would, oh, it would be Yes, x is unknown, two is known. Okay. Um, that being said, if you are trying to find, like we were earlier, if you're like trying to find like x is, uh, f prime of zero, you can't just go ahead and say f of zero is equal to yada, 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 yada. Um, so this is gonna be a number. Um, so you can't just like take the derivative of that because that's just going to be zero if it's a number. So you need to find the actual f prime of function. You need to say f like of x is equal to f prime of x is equal to, and then you can say f prime of zero is equal to. Um, so you have to go through all of these steps. You can't just sub in at any random point. Okay, let's try number six. Um, here we have y is equal to two to the x plus two over x cubed. Well, we know what to do with this because this is 3.1 material. Um, that's something that we did. This is our problem. Um, we've got this x all the way up here. Ooh, did not need to cross that out. Um, we've got this x up here, so we know that 2 to the x is not like x to the 2. It's a very different function, so we have to approach it in a very different way. And that way that we're going to approach it is, um, I hate these problems. I'll just like say that right now. I hate how they, like, there's like a rule in here somewhere for this. But um, the easiest way for me to solve this is to um, like write it in terms of e. So um, <clears throat> let's see. How do I want to explain this? So there's a rule in here. Do you guys? Do you guys want to? Uh, Mm. Okay. So the rule basically says that if of a to the x is equal to ln a a to the x. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. Um, give me a give me a hot sec. Sorry. I don't. I don't think I'm gonna. I think that this is just one of the rules that you should know. Sorry. Um, um, like I guess, oh, oh, you know what, we're just, okay. So um, do you remember when we had like uh, this equation? Do you remember this experience? Okay. Um, yeah, it was an experience. So here we had something that was e to the kt and a to the t. And we knew that e to the kt is equal to a to the t, right? Because of the way that these were like drawn up. Agree? So we basically need to use this. If e to the kt is equal to a t, um, in this case, our a to the t is two to the x. And this is e to the k x 
um, we just need to find what k is, right? It's not going to be 2. What it's going to be, so we're going to take the natural log of this and the natural log of this, because we have to take the natural log of both sides, right? So we have um, kx is equal to natural log of 2 to the x, which is equal to x ln 2, right? Divide both sides by x, k is equal to ln 2. I don't think they walked through that in the book explicitly, but it's just like nice to like see it. So uh, what, I, what I would do is I would say that this is actually y is equal to e to the ln 2 x plus 2 x to the minus 3. And this is how I would solve it. I, I did stuffing your brain with another rule. I mean, if it's if it like is easier for you to do that, then I would 100% go ahead and memorize the rule. But this is something that we kind of did earlier. So our k is equal to the uh, ln of two. So um. this is going to be derived, it's going to look like this. So we said that e to the ln 2 x is equal to 2 to the x. So this is y prime is equal to ln 2 times e to the ln 2 x, because again, this doesn't change. Um, and this doesn't come down, like, like, like you, you could just keep copying it. So if I were to take another derivative, it, you would just copy it again. So you don't ever get rid of this up here. Um, plus or minus 6x to the negative 4. And we said earlier that this was equal to 2x, so we get the same answer as the book. So the natural log of 2 times 2 to the x minus 6x to the negative 4, because this is equal to Thoughts, comments, concerns? Well. If you guys want to memorize the rule, please go ahead. I just, it's easier for me to think about things in terms of like as few rules as possible. So that's, and we had talked about this earlier, so. If you just think of it, if you just don't forget the p is equal to p naught e to the k t and a p naught a to the t, then you'll always just kind of remember that e to the k t equals a to the t. F prime. Yes. Um, comment in the chat box says that the the derivative of, um, so here's our original function. If our function just looks like this, then our derivative is just going to look like this. Yes. And that is exactly what the book has. So their rule just says, So it's the same method. Here's the books method via rule. Is there any reason not to memorize how that works and not go through the steps each time? Um, no, there's not. Um, and I'm going to say this like totally honestly, there's not. But this really does not come up ever because nobody wants to use 2 to the x. Why would anyone do that when e to the ln 2x exists? Or e to some other number to the x? Um, this appears very, very rarely in problems. 
so rarely that I just walk through it every time and have never memorized this rule. And so every time this section comes up, I have to reteach myself. I'm like, okay, so like this is the rule. And then I'm like, oh yeah, if I hit this kind of a problem, I'm just gonna e to the kt is equal to at it because I have no energy to do another rule. It's been three years since I took my first calculus class and I just I just don't. <laughs> my brain isn't isn't prepared for that. So I don't want to think about that. I want to think about this right here because I know this. And I'm going to use that to solve this problem. But it's not that common a problem. It probably will show up on like one of your exams, but <clears throat> I have not seen this once since this section, probably. And if I have, I always just do the KT. So that is the truth. Um, so yeah, there's the story. All right, so uh, let's talk about problem. Let's do problem. Oh, we already did that so problem. Let's do problem 14. We also did this sort of a problem. Um, let's do 26. And then let's do 28. So 14 is y is equal to e to the negative 4t. 26 is going to be y is equal to t squared plus 5 ln t. Yes, exactly. Um, in the chat box, we already have an answer to that. So that's negative 4 e to the negative 14. Perfect. That's easy. Check. We move on with our lives. Um, I just cleared the whole thing. Shoot. Okay, so this is what, 26. This is y is equal to t squared plus 5 ln t. First things first, is this in as like the base or is this the exponent uh, with the variable? In this case, it's the base, so we're just going to use our regular polynomial rules. So we know that, that is good. Now, what is this? Um, I tend to just like separate numbers, like this is something that you'll get more familiar with the more problems you do, but um, to explicitly write it out, Um, all right, C to the, we're just going to make it general. So this is constant and a function. So here is our function and here is our constant, right? So this is, this number is just hanging out here. It's very loosely attached. It can be moved a lot. Yes. Um, and so it's going to be separated so C is on the outside. So that basically means that I don't have to think about taking a derivative of that 5. And I can just multiply whatever the derivative of ln t is by 5 and I will be correct. So in the chat box we already had the answer. That is going to be plus 5 over t. Perfect. All right. Um, now let's do 28. So this is x squared plus 4x. Uh, minus 3 ln x. So y prime is equal to 2x plus 4 minus 3 over x. Same rules as before. This is 3.1 stuff. Oops, I lost my pen. 3.1. This is 3.2. Okay. Again, you're going to see 
the natural log and never, you're always going to see this, never this. Oh, we just, the natural log is so much easier to use. And that's the beauty of it. Um, it's really like, you think that E and natural log, like it's such like random numbers, but because it works out so nicely, that's the reason we chose those random numbers because those random numbers just are very clean and we like them. So that's all I really have for 3.2. Um, are there any questions on the rest of 3.2 slash 3.1? And we can move on to 3.5. Any concerns about this material? I think my chat box just glitched. I don't know if I had a message or not. Let me check. Oh, one quick question. Okay. I don't know why my chat box didn't scroll. Why do you, why do we use the derivative of E, uh, but not E in the derivative of LM? Oh, okay. So the question is, why do we use the natural log when we're taking a derivative of E, but not E when we're taking the, uh, the derivative of the natural log? And the answer is, is that we don't really when we're taking the derivative of E. Um, shoot, I lost my whole chat box. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Give me a sec. I clearly have no idea what I'm doing. Um, okay, I brought it back. Um, so the, it's a good question. Um, the thing is, is that we really didn't use it when we were just doing of E. So if we had just the function f of x is equal to e to the three x, I don't know why I wrote k, it's x. Um, and then we had the function h of x is equal to 3 ln x. Um, we know from our rules that um, f prime here is going to be 3 e to the 3 x, and h prime is going to be 3 over x. Um, and here we didn't use the natural log to solve. And here we didn't use E to solve. But it's a different case entirely when we're looking at a, a function that's grody like this one. Um, and the reason it, it just is grodier is because this is not a nice number. Because it's not E. And E is probably the best number that you'll ever experience in calculus because it comes out so cleanly. Um, so because it's not E, we have to rewrite it in a form that means we can analyze it like we would E. And so that form happens to include a natural log because that's how it just, yeah, that's how it does. And so now we can use our standard rules. Does that kind of make sense? Awesome, okay. Um, all right, so let's talk about 3.5. <sighs> this, I'm, I never understood why they did it in the order that they did it. Um, I like understood they were trying to get like some of the simpler rules out of the way, but there are problems in 3.5 that you cannot solve. Um, if you try to solve some of these problems, you will not be able to. So we're going to solve the ones that you can solve, and we'll get back to the other ones after you learn the chain rule. So don't panic if you're like looking at some of these other problems and you're like, hey, like I don't actually have any idea where to start with this, because that's fine, you're not supposed to yet. Okay, so let's do problem two, problem four, problem six, and problem eight. 
and 2 is going to be y is equal to 5 sine x. Okay, um, all right, so um, basically, uh, again, here we are with the constant, so there's a constant there, constant there, constant here. Um, we're just going to find out what the derivative of the sine of x is, um, and so this is a memorization thing. Um, so the derivative of sine of x is cos of x. So this is just going to be y prime is equal to 5 cos x. So pretty simple. Um, we're going to move on to number 4. y prime is equal to, this is 3.1 material. Um, 5 turn into 0. Because this is multiplied, not um, added to. Yeah, so because it is a constant here, um, if this was y is equal to 5 sine x plus 5, I, I don't do parentheses around like this, and I'm sorry. Um, it, I, I'm sorry, I just, it's too much. Um, so 5 sine x and then you have plus 5, then this, the derivative of it would be 0. But as it is, this is multiplied to it, so it's kind of like attached. Okay, so y prime is equal to 2t plus, um, well, is it plus this question? Um, because the derivative of cos x is not sine x, it is negative sine x. And losing the negative sign is a very common mistake, so don't lose your negative sign. It is minus 5 sine t. And that minus is very important. So when you're going from sine to cosine, you can you keep your sine. When you're going from cosine to sine, you have to add a negative sign in there, which sucks, but that's the way it is. Okay. So for number six, same sort of a process, we have r prime of q is equal to 2q plus 2 sine q. Again, when this is going from cos to sine, this sine is going to switch. So that's going to become a positive. Because a negative times a negative is a positive. All right. So for this one, we, are, we have a number that's inside with the x, right? Which is a little bit different from what we've had up here. And we're basically, I had a tendency when I was first learning it to think of like, I, I understood when I had e to the kt or e to the kx, where k was like a number, that um, the derivative of that was going to be k e to the kx. So I just kept bringing k down. Um, and I could do it as, like, as many times, like if I took a second derivative or something like that. Um, so... That's the same process that we're going to go through here. Um, we're just going to keep pulling this out. So f prime of x is equal to 3 cos 3x. Three so this stays just like it does if we're thinking about e. Um, and e pops onto the outside as well. Sorry, my chat is glitching horribly. OK. Yes, so we don't switch the sign here. Exactly. Okay. All right. Let's do a couple more of these. Let's do 14. Actually, let's just do 14. I made the mistake 
uh, last semester of trying to branch out and like trying to do some different problems. And um, other than the ones that I had like explicitly written out beforehand, and they all turned out to be ones that like hadn't been covered yet. And it was just very confusing. And I, I felt really bad because I had a lot of very confused people in my, in my room. Okay. So this is just Z is equal to cos four theta. And I will often write something like this with no uh, parentheses. Um, and I'm, if like, if you guys need me to clarify something, I can absolutely do that. But this is just easier to write. And this is kind of how I read it. Uh, so if Z is equal to cos four theta, then Z prime is equal to negative four sine four theta. And theta is just a Greek letter that they use as a variable. This could just as easily be x. The theta is the big thing here. It's like, oh, different number. Um, it also like is used to like represent angle. I know. Okay, but like it saves me time later on. I'm getting called out for talking about not using parentheses when I could just use the parentheses, and I just oh. I'm going to forget, just like I always forget to to write my x's in a way that's like comprehend or not x's f's in a way that's comprehensible. So, yes, I'm being called out, but that's fine. I don't really have much more to say about this. So, uh, do you have any questions? Nope. All right. So basically, I would say just kind of practice. Do you practice problems? Work hard? I don't know. Um, I would just recommend going through. Oh, there actually is a question. Exciting. One of the questions on the quiz that added in rate of change. Um, what do you mean by added in rate of change? Like, was it just like talking about rate of change? Like the rate of change of this thing is represented by this function sort of thing? So basically, it is from a previous chapter, um, relative rate of change. Um, and this is kind of like functional like derivatives. Um, I see, I don't know if you're allowed to type the question because the quiz technically isn't like done yet, I think. Um, I'm going to, oh, they do give you the answers? Then yeah, type the question, that's fine. If I get called out later, then that's fine. Okay, so um, let's see. So we have the question let f of t, oh, cheese. So is that just one third? Okay t squared sorry when it gets translated into like this it looks funny plus t plus four so calculate the relative rate of change at t equals one Okay, so I misread the like the question that you had asked me earlier about relative rate of change, and I was thinking when you said that, I was thinking about average rate of change, um, which, as you remember, if we had like a function, this is kind of how I like to view average rate of change. If we had a function that kind of looks like this, 
the average rate of change from this point to this point can be represented by a line. And so our goal with calculus was to keep getting smaller and smaller increments so that we could get a more and more precise line that eventually became the tangent line, remember? Okay, so basically what this question is asking you, um, this is kind of, this is like what we're doing now, um, because what it's saying is that, so if this is the average rate of change, um, what we're looking at is the relative rate of change, or like the instantaneous rate of change. So when t is equal to one, what is the rate of change? Um, I think, I'm pretty sure that's what they're asking. And like what you do there is you take the derivative so that you can determine what the instantaneous rate of change is because the instantaneous rate of change is that line at that point, that tangent line. So you would say that f prime of t is equal to two over three t plus one plus zero, so two over three t plus one. And so when t is equal to one, you have f prime of one is equal to two over three plus three over three equal to five over three. So your relative rate of change at t is equal to one is just going to be five over three. So this is like mostly a question with like language. That's the answer you gave and it was wrong. What was the actual answer? Five over 16. Maybe I don't know my language. All right. Ooh. Ooh. That's grody. I don't like that. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess they're right. I just think that's a dirty question. So what, like, what it is, they're talking about relative rate of change, not instantaneous rate of change. I'm just... Again, it is a language question. Um, they want you to be like as familiar as possible with this language. So it is because it's relative rate of change. Um, you have to compare it to f originally, so it's f prime over f, I guess. Um, I don't, I, I'm making a lot of faces right now. I don't like that question. I think it's, a little cringe, but <clears throat> I guess they do what they want to do. Um, and just kind of remember that if they're talking about relative rate of change, you got to do something funky. So that's, that's what I have to say about that question. Not a very good answer, I know, but that's what I got. Sorry. Are there any more questions? Perhaps something that's not as, I don't know, deceptive. I'm getting silence. They had two questions like that on yours? Oh my goodness. Did they, they did not talk about this in this section. Oh. That's so mean. That's not even, oh, that's not even the focus of what's going on here. Power rule, derivative formulas, tangent lines, revenue, cubic polynomials. There's nothing in here about relative rate of change in what we're talking about. I mean, it is something you should know, but to have two questions like that on a quiz, mm, I am filled with indignation. I feel for you. I really do. I'm so sorry. 
I like I can't I can't fix it for you, but I do feel bad. Um, and I hope that that doesn't happen on any other exam ever. I'm sending no more relative rate of change vibes your way. So periodic functions. There's nothing in this section either. X cosine derivatives, differentiating these, constants. Mm -mm. Chapter summary. Oh, maybe that's in the logarithm chapter. Okay. I don't know. I'll look into it. Um, and, and we may talk about it next week if it gets into, if it happens again, basically. All right. No questions about things other than that. Then I think we're going to wrap it up for the evening. Um, thank you for coming in. And I will see y'all next week. Have a wonderful week slash evening slash et cetera. <laughs>